The Making of Five Stones, an aquascape by James Findlay, professional aquascaper and founder of The Green Machine. This year, James Findlay was commissioned to plant an all ADA aquascape. First, we will look at James's inspiration for this layout. Secondly, we will explore the origins of Iwagumi layouts and look at how you can create a beautiful and effective one at home before finally surmising the main steps in such a layout. As the layout comes together, you will see that this tank was created in the traditional Iwagumi style. James wanted to bring out the simplicity and beauty of the ADA white cabinet and to experiment with the ADA aqua screen. So he decided to create the layout as a tribute to Andy Warhol and the pop art movement, which used strong, vibrant, contrasting colours to create vivid graphic images. In order to achieve this, James used Sado Akadama stone, which has a strong red colour to contrast against the green aqua screen. The Iwagumi layout lends itself well to the pop art style because of its strong graphic lines. Because this was a display piece, James used the full ADA substrate system. The substrate additives are not essential and a beautiful nature aquarium display can be created using just ADA aquasoil. But because it was important for the display to be perfect, James opted to use the full system to make sure that the aquarium was easy to maintain and ensure the best possible plant growth. The substrate additives are all designed to ensure that the optimum conditions for the growth and multiplication of beneficial bacteria are achieved and maintained within the substrate layer for the duration of the aquarium's life. Once all of the substrate additives have been completed, the power sand is then added. Power sand is an excellent material that really makes a difference to the maintenance of the aquascape and is used in all of the displays in the green machine. James uses substrate supports to allow him to bank up the substrate very high in the middle without the aquasoil rolling back down or collapsing. Finally, the aqua soil is carefully added to the aquarium and this completed the substrate layer. Using a small plastic container makes it a much more manageable task than pouring it straight out of the bag. Once the substrate layer is complete, the next step is to place the hardscape materials. The hardscape materials are very important because they create the framework of the layout. For more information on this, please see our earlier videos or read the articles on our website. This video will concentrate specifically on the layout and composure of an Iwagumi. The term Iwagumi is commonly heard in the aquascaping world. It is used to refer to an aquascape that traditionally uses stones as the only hardscape material and as you will see, Iwagumis are a very versatile layout that can be incredibly captivating, beautiful, mysterious or dramatic. The term Iwagumi was originally used to refer to a Japanese gardening style in which stones were used as the bones of the garden, in other words to provide its structure. There is no minimum or limit to the number of stones in an Iwagumi layout. 
Those with more stones have an added element of complexity and intricacy, whilst those with fewer stones, like Sanzoni Wagumis, which have just three stones, possess a more striking symbolic elegance. It is best to use an odd number of stones, three, five, seven or nine, because humans have a tendency to arrange things in a stylized or symmetrical way, which is very unnatural and quite unattractive. It is ironic that we are naturally drawn to patterns of randomness and even chaos, but then when we attempt to create something beautiful, we instinctively revert to stylized patterns that we find unattractive. For more information on this, have a look at the video, The Making of Nature's Chaos, Using an odd number of stones prevents us from arranging the stones in an orderly, symmetrical way and makes the iwagumi more attractive and natural. It also prevents the scape appearing to be split with an even number of stones on either side. An iwagumi layout, the names and functions of the rocks. Once James has placed all the stones, he makes a final check to ensure that the overall layout is balanced and then places more substrate supports between the rocks. Finally, he pours a little more aqua soil over the stones to create a more natural effect. Each rock in an Iwagumi has its own name and function. When selecting your stones, it is important to bear in mind their purpose within the aquascape. It is best to use the same variety of stone throughout the Iwagumi aquascape as this will create a more natural effect. The primary stone, or farthest stone, is the main stone in the layout. It should be the largest and most beautiful stone and have a striking character and form. The primary stone should be around two thirds of the height of the aquarium, as this ratio appeals to the human eye, as explained by the theory of the golden ratio, or rule of thirds. These are used in all art forms from painting to aquascaping. For more information on the golden ratio, please read the article in the free aquascaping library on the Green Machines website. As you can see here, the primary stone should be tilted slightly rather than standing bolt upright to represent the flow of the water and create a more natural look. In Japanese gardens, the stones do stand upright, but because when we are aquascaping, we are recreating underwater worlds, the stone should be tilted. If the stone were in a river, it would naturally be tilted because of the force of the flow. By tilting the primary stone, a more natural and beautiful effect is achieved. This secondary stone, should be the second largest and is placed on either the left or the right hand side of the primary stone. The secondary stone should be a similar texture and the same type of stone as the primary one. This tertiary stone is placed next to the primary stone along with the secondary stone. The tertiary stone plays an important role in the flow of an iwagumi by bolstering the strength of the primary stone or accentuating its presence. It is therefore vital to the overall balance of the layout and its importance should not be underestimated. The sacrificial stone is a small stone that does not stand out in its own right and may even become hidden by plants over time. Sacrificial stones can be omitted from the aquascape if you are creating a Sanzon Iwagumi, which has a more striking presence. But sacrificial stones add an element of subtlety, intricacy and complexity to the Iwagumi. Once all the stones have been placed and the substrate has been secured with substrate supports, James makes any final delicate adjustments with a paintbrush before spraying the aqua soil with water. The glass is then cleaned for the purposes of filming, although it is a good idea to clear the glass anyway to ensure that you can see what you are doing properly when you check on the overall display. Now planting can start. Good aquascaping tools are vital for planting an aquarium. They reduce any potential damage caused to the plant roots during the planting process and allow plants to be placed precisely, accurately and easily. Aquatic plants can soften the visual impact of the stones, so they can be used to create a harmonious balance within the aquascape. Low-growing plants can be used to accentuate the details of a rock arrangement. Planting low-growing plants in between the rocks or next to them is critical to enhance the natural effect but make sure you use low-growing plants that will not obscure the structure of your Iwagumi. Suggested plants include Hemianthus calotracoides cuba, Eleocharis parvula, Eleocharis acicularis, and Glossus stigma alitinoides, to name but a few. Higher-growing plants, such as Eleocharis vivipara, can be used in the background of an Iwagumi to add depth 
and intricacy to the scape if desired. Hemianthus calotrichoides cuba makes a very good carpeting plant because of its small height, usually not much more than one centimetre. James chose it for its lush bright green colour to complement the reds of the ADA Sado Akadama stone. It can be planted in a figure of five shape, like on a dice, so when it grows and spreads it will eventually fill the surface of the substrate layer. Aquascaping pincets make the job much easier. James dampens the substrate as it gives it more grip on the roots of the plants and helps hold them more effectively during the planting stage. About 12 standard pots were used so that the completed carpet effect would be achieved fairly quickly. To save money, less pots could be used but it would take longer to achieve a complete carpet. A golden rule in any planted tank is to use as many plants as you can afford from day one of the aquarium. This will result in fewer algae problems in the aquascape due to the plant mass outcompeting the algae for light and nutrients. Alton Anthera Reineke Pink was chosen for its deep purple and red colours to break up the general greenness of the plants. It is placed slightly off centre in the gaps between the stones. James wanted it to create graphic lines on the green of the aquas green, which can be seen being fitted later in this video. Two standard pots were used. To encourage a more bonsai style growth, James trimmed the leaves to approximately half their size. After two to three weeks they will be cut back again. This method promotes a much smaller leaf size for the rest of the plant's life. This technique may be used with many species of stem plant. Hygrophila corymbosa compact was chosen for its very compact form. Generally it will stay about 8 cm in height. This is a very useful plant when aquascaping smaller aquariums. In larger aquariums it can be used as a low maintenance foreground carpeting plant. It does need a little maintenance once planted. Two standard pots were used for this aquascape. James makes a hole in the damp substrate, puts the long root system into the hole and then secures it in place by compacting the substrate around the roots with his fingers. Cling film and newspaper is used to secure the aquascape materials and plants in place before the aquarium is half filled with water. This helps minimise any disturbance of the materials. To summarise, the basic steps to create an Iwagumi layout are First, create the substrate layer. Substrate additives and power sand are not essential, but they are recommended if your budget can accommodate them. For a traditional Iwagumi, lay an even layer of substrate across the base of the aquarium. More substrate will be added after the stones have been placed, but if you want a more complex and varied Iwagumi, like the one James has created here, then the substrate can be laid more thickly at the back or corners of the aquarium. Number 2. Place the main stone in accordance with the golden ratio, or rule of thirds. So the stone should be about two thirds the height of the aquarium, and placed at a point that is about two-thirds the width of the aquarium. 3. Arrange the remaining rocks in descending order of size, placing the largest first and the smallest last. Pay attention to the balance of the angles of the rocks to help you place the stones. 4. When you have a layout that you are happy with, and this may take a couple of attempts, it is best to leave the aquarium for a day or two so you can consider the layout for a while. 5. Finish the layout by using a cup or container. Carefully pour more substrate over it to mound the substrate naturally. Let the substrate flow naturally between the stones. 
finish with a layer of aquasoil powder for a fine effect. Read more about aquasoil powder in our free online aquascaping library. Waste plant materials will float on the surface. To remove these, James uses a wet and dry vacuum cleaner. This is particularly useful in larger aquariums such as the display tanks in the green machine. They make the job far quicker and easier. It is also possible to use a simple net. While the Cenaria nana is planted next, it is easier working with this plant when there is some water in the tank because the water supports the long leaves and helps prevent them from tangling. This plant was chosen to give some height to the left and right of the aquascape and to create a tunnel-like effect once they've grown in and joined centrally. Once again, aquascaping pin sets are essential. Approximately 10 stems are planted in each grouping, making 20 in total. This is around four to five standard pots. The aquascape is now filled to the top. Somalia caris acicularis has been added to the back centre of the aquascape to create a finer green halo. Once the planting is complete, James makes a final check to ensure the overall balance of the layout and planting. He removes any debris floating on the surface of the aquarium or from under the water and then fills it to the top. The aquarium cannot be filled properly before this stage because otherwise it would overflow whenever you put your hands into the water. The ADA Solar One white light is turned on and James applies the ADA Aqua Screen in clear green to the back of the aquarium. This is relatively easy and simple to do and does not damage the aquarium or cause any permanent effect. Aqua Screens are available in green, clear green, blue, clear blue and black and provide a welcome opportunity for experimentation. James chose green to complement and contrast the red colour of the Sado Akadama stone and he has used it in the typical pop art style. Applying aqua screens can be tricky if you don't follow some basic rules. The screen should be cut to just slightly smaller than the tank back panel before fitting, unless of course it is already the correct size. This should be done very carefully and precisely to ensure straight edges. Make sure that there is no overhang at the edges of the tank. Aqua screens are applied with some water mixed with just one to two drops of washing up liquid. This aids with movement and final placement of the screen. Peel off one edge of the screen and start applying it to the glass. Carefully unroll five to six inch sections at a time and continue until the whole sheet is applied. Keep misting the glass and the aqua screen as it is unrolled. Use a credit card to push any air bubbles to the edges of the screen as you go. Eventually, they should all disappear.
Three months after planting, the aquascape has grown in well, and you can see for yourself the quality of the system used. Here you can see some Vesicularia ferii weeping moss, which has been added to create a darker green to contrast the light green Hemianthus carpet. At 60 litres, this is a fairly small sized tank, so James chose small fish species to create a feeling of space. Orizias minutilus, common name, dwarf rice fish, were chosen for their small size. Seven Otocinculus affinis were added to graze on any algae that may form on the stones. About 20 bee shrimp and 10 amano shrimp were added because they add interest to the tank and are good algae grazers. Five months later, the tank has fully matured, the plants are grown in and the original vision of a pop art inspired nature aquarium can be seen. James was not happy with the performance of the Volicinaria nana, so he replaced it with Cyprus helferi, which has more body. As you can see, this plant changes the look of the aquascape quite dramatically. On the right hand side, you can see a glass CO2 diffuser with carbon dioxide bubbles streaming into the water. Elsewhere in the tank, you can see oxygen bubbles being released from the plants. The plants use the CO2 and light for photosynthesis, from which oxygen is produced as a byproduct. The fish breathe this oxygen, and it is for this reason that unsightly air stones are not required when keeping fish in a planted aquarium. We hope you've enjoyed and found this aquascaping documentary informative. Look out for further videos on the Green Machine YouTube channel. Goodbye and thanks for watching.